Marple Annex 2. Regulations for the control of pollution by noxious liquid substances in bulk. Entered into force the 2nd of October 1983. Provisions took effect from the 6th of April 1987. Before the 1st of July 1986. Chemical tankers should comply with the requirements of the Code for the Construction and Equipment of Ships Carrying Dangerous Chemicals in Bulk, BCH Code. After the 1st of July 1986. All chemical tanker to comply with the International Bulk Chemical Code, IBC Code. Carriage of chemicals in bulk is covered by regulations in Solus Chapter 7, Carriage of Dangerous Goods and Marple Annex 2, Regulations for the Control of Pollution by Noxious Liquid Substances in Bulk. Solus and Marple Conventions require chemical tankers built after 1 July 1986 to comply with the International Bulk Chemical Code, IBC Code. IBC code sets out the international standards for the safe carriage of dangerous chemicals and noxious liquid substances in bulk by sea. It lays down design and a construction standard of ships involved in the transport of bulk liquid chemicals. With regard to the nature of the products carried, IBC code also identifies the equipment to be carried on ship to minimize the risks to the ship, its crew and to the environment. It sets out a list of chemicals and their hazards, and identifies both the ship type required to carry that product and the environmental hazard rating. Hazards of noxious liquid substances. Chemical cargoes may pose below hazard or hazards. Fire hazard. Marine pollution hazard. Highly reactive. Health hazard. They can be either corrosive, poisonous, produce toxic vapors, damage to eyes or the nervous system or can have carcinogenic effects. Cargo category as per Marple Annex 2. Category X. Noxious liquid substances which, if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deballasting operations, are deemed to present a major hazard to either marine resources or human health and, therefore, justify the prohibition of the discharge into the marine environment. Category Y. Noxious liquid substances which, if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deballasting operations, are deemed to present a hazard to either marine resources or human health or cause harm to amenities or other legitimate uses of the sea and therefore justify a limitation on the quality and quantity of the discharge into the marine environment. Category Z. Noxious liquid substances which, if discharged into the sea from tank cleaning or deballasting operations, are deemed to present a minor hazard to either marine resources or human health and therefore justify less stringent restrictions on the quality and quantity of the discharge into the marine environment. Other substances, substances which have been evaluated and found to fall outside category X, Y or Z because they are considered to present no harm to marine resources, human health, amenities or other legitimate uses of the sea when discharged into the sea from tank cleaning of deballasting operations. The discharge of bilge or ballast water or other residues or mixtures containing these substances are not subject to any requirements of Marple Annex 2. Marple Annex 2. Chapter 7 Prevention of Pollution Arising from an Incident Involving Noxious Liquid Substances, Regulation 17. Shipboard Marine Pollution Emergency Plan, SMPEP. Every ship of 150 gross tonnage and above certified to carry noxious liquid substances in bulk shall carry on board a shipboard marine pollution emergency plan for noxious liquid substances. It should be approved by the administration. Such a plan shall be based on the guidelines developed by the organization. It should be written in a working language or languages understood by the master and officers. The plan shall consist at least of Procedure to be followed by the master or other persons having charge of the ship to report a noxious liquid. Substances pollution incident, as required in Article 8 and Protocol 1 of the present convention, based on the guidelines developed by the organization. List of authorities or persons to be contacted in the event of a noxious liquid substances pollution incident. A detailed description of the action to be taken immediately by persons on board to reduce or control the discharge of noxious liquid substances following the incident, and the procedures and point of contact on the ship for coordinating shipboard action with national and local authorities in combating the pollution. In the case of ships to which Regulation 37 of Annex 1 of the Convention also applies, such a plan may be combined with the Shipboard Oil Pollution Emergency Plan. Required under Regulation 37 of Annex 1 of the Convention. In this case, the title of such a plan shall be Shipboard Marine Pollution Emergency Plan. 
SMPEP should be reviewed at least annually, to reflect changes in legislation, contact details, vessel equipments and changes in company procedure. Contents of SMPEP Introduction Section 1 Preamble Section 2 Reporting Requirements 2.1 General 2.2 Reporting Procedures 2.2.1 When to Report Actual Discharge and Probable Discharge 2.2.2 Information Required 2.2.3 Who to Contact 1. Coastal State Contact 2. Port Contacts 3. Ship Interest Contacts Section 3. Steps to Control Discharge 3.1 Operational Spills 3.2 Spills Resulting from Casualties 3.3 Priority Actions 3.4 Mitigating Activities 3.5 Transfer of Lightning 3.6 Damage Stability and Hull Stress Calculation 3.7 General Responsibilities of the Master and Ship Crew Section 4 National and Local Coordination Section 5 Non-Mandatory Information Appendix 1 Initial Notification Appendix 2 Coastal State Contacts Appendix 3 Port Contacts Appendix 4 Ship Interest Contacts Procedures and Arrangements Manual P and the Manual It is a ship-specific manual. It should be approved by administration. It includes various arrangement and operational procedures with respect to cargo handling, tank cleaning, pro-wash, stripping, slops handling, residue discharging, ballasting and deballasting. Identifies the arrangements and equipment required to enable compliance with MARPLE Annex 2. Content of Procedures and Arrangements Manual. Introduction. Section 1 Main Features of MARPLE 7378, Annex 2. Section 2 Description of the Ship's Equipment and Arrangements. 2.1 Outline. 2.2 General Arrangement of Ship and Cargo Tanks. Details of this ship and substances allowed to be carried. 2.3 Cargo Pumping and Piping Arrangements and Stripping System Details of Cargo Piping, Cargo Pump, Stripping System, Stripping Pump, Cargo Tank and its Fittings, Overfill Control 2.4 Ballast Tanks, Pumping and Piping Arrangements 2.5 Dedicated Slop Tank with Associated Piping and Pumping Arrangements 2.6 Underwater Discharge Outlet for effluents containing noxious liquid substances 2.7 Cargo Tank Ventilation System 2.8 Tank Washing Arrangement and Wash Water Heating System Section 3 Cargo Unloading Procedures and Tank Stripping 3.1 Outline 3.2 Cargo Unloading 3.3 Cargo Tank Stripping 3.4 Cargo Temperature 3.5 Procedures to be followed when a cargo tank cannot be unloaded in accordance with the required procedures Cargo Record Book Section 4 Procedures Relating to the Cleaning of Cargo Tanks, the Discharge of Residues, Ballasting and Deballasting. 1. Outline. 2. Category of Substances. 3. Stripping Efficiency of Tank Pumping System. 4. Vessel Within or Outside Special Areas. 5. Compatibility with Slops Containing Other Substances. 6. Discharge to Reception Facility. 7. Discharge into the Sea. Category X, Category Y, Category Z. 8. Use of cleaning agents or additives. 9. Use of ventilation procedures for tank cleaning. 4.5 Outline, Appendix, Addendum A, Flow Diagram. Cleaning of cargo tanks and disposal of tank washings, ballast containing residues of Category X, Y and Z substances. Addendum B, Prowash Procedure. Addendum C, Ventilation Procedures. Table and data included. Cargo list for P and A manual. Compatibility chart. Cargo tank stripping test result. Cargo tank information. Technical data of tank cleaning machine. Various figure included in P and A manual. General arrangement. Cargo piping diagram. Pumping diagram. Underwater discharge outlet and sea water intakes. Cargo vent piping diagram. Schematic diagram of cargo line. Midship section. Cargo record book. Every chemical tanker of 150 gross tonnage and above shall be provided with cargo record book. It should be kept readily available for inspection at all reasonable times and shall be preserved for a period of three years after the last entry has been made. Entries shall be made in English, French or Spanish.
Each entry shall be signed by the officer in charge of the operations and each page shall be signed by the master of the ship. Entries to be made for all categories of cargo after each operation is completed. Loading of cargo. Internal transfer of cargo. Unloading of cargo. Mandatory prewash in accordance with the ship's procedures and arrangements manual. Cleaning of cargo tanks except mandatory prewash operations, final wash, ventilation, etc. Discharge into the sea of tank washings. Ballasting of cargo tanks. Discharge of ballast water from cargo tanks. Accidental or other exceptional discharge. Marple Annex 2 Special Area. Antarctic Area. Antarctic Area means the sea area. South of latitude 60 degrees south. Discharge criteria inside special area. With respect to Antarctic area, any. Discharge into the sea of oil or oily. Mixture from any ship shall be prohibited. Certificates as per Marple Annex 2. The International Pollution Prevention Certificate for the Carriage of Noxious Liquid Substances in Bulk, NLS Certificate, which shall be valid for a period not exceeding five years. Certificate of Fitness. Ships carrying cargoes specified under. The Chapter 17 of the IBC Code shall hold a Certificate of Fitness under the IBC or BCH Code. Few Sire 2.0 Observation. Vessel if using e-cargo record book, no documents or authorization from flag or class was found. Where the vessel was using an electronic cargo record book, there was no instructions available for the use of the electronic record book system. On board there was no facility of automatic backup and recovery of data where electronic cargo record book was used. The officers on board was not familiar with the company procedure for maintaining cargo record book as per Marple and flag requirement. The officers on board was not familiar with the entries to be made in cargo record book. Entries in the cargo record book were not accurate record of cargo operations. Recorded operations that were in violation of Marple Annex 2. Entries in the cargo record book did not record all cargo latest operations required to be recorded by Marple. Entries in the CRB were not signed by the officer in charge of each operation. Entries in the CRB were not verified and signed by master on completion of each pages. Entries in the CRB were not supported by a receipt or a certificate which when was wash water was disposed to reception facility. Entries in the cargo record book were not corrected in manner as required by company. Tank washing disposal to the sea had not been made in compliance with Marple Annex 2. Where a prewash has been carried out in accordance with Marple Annex 2 requirement, the required entry in CRB has not been endorsed done before by the local port authority inspector or equivalent. The entries in CRB did not correctly identify cargoes by the correct technical names according to the Certificate of Fitness. Pollution incident was recorded in cargo record book. Where a vessel was an oil chemical. Carrier. Marple Annex 1 cargo operation has been entered in cargo record book rather than in the oil record book part 2. Amendment to Marple Annex 2. Use of electronic record books. Refer MEPC 312 and 314, on or after 1 October 2020. Guidelines regarding use of electronic record books for Marple Annex 1, 2, 5, 6 and as well as the NOx technical code can be used after flag or class approval were also issued. Protecting seas in the Arctic. In force from 1 May 2024, adopted by MEPC 79, amendments to MARPOL Annex 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. Regional arrangements for port reception facilities, amendments to the Marple Annexes to allow states with ports in the Arctic region to enter into regional arrangements for port reception facilities. Amendments to Marple Annex 2. Adopted by IMO Resolution MEPC.31574. Effective 1 January 2021. Cargo residues and tank washings of persistent floating products. New amendments were adopted by IMO Resolution MEPC.31574, which have newly defined persistent floating products, persistent floaters, and impose stricter prewash requirements. In addition, the new amendments also impact the standard format of the procedures and arrangements, P and A, manual. P and A manual on board ship shall be amended before the 1st of January 2021. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe this video among your friends and colleagues.
Join our Telegram channel for latest maritime updates and exams preparations.